like to uh, reiterate my uh, thanks to Cl uh, Klaus for uh, the invitation. It's been a, a huge honor. Um, I, I think my job is to set the stage for the rest of the talks, looking back on what was discussed yesterday. And uh, I would like to start with this question. Why do we do hip preservation? Thanks to these two giants, uh, we now know that subtle deformities such as these, if not managed when symptomatic, can uh, cause uh, arthritis in the hip joint early on. Uh, we now have stronger and stronger evidence that uh, such subtle lesions uh, become uh, an important issue. Dysplasia, as we know, for a long time, is, uh, we're seeing it in a much subtle form, but again, uh, it, is, it can be very problematic in the short run. Uh, how, however, our patients' demands are increasing, and um, uh, look, so th that's why we're uh, more and more uh, looking on to solutions for uh, such subtle problems. And uh, as you know, total hip arthroplasty is probably one of the most successful uh, surgical operations ever developed second uh, to coronary artery bypass surgery. However, historically, uh, it was not recommended by its founders uh, to be performed in young patients, which we are facing uh, now. The reason for that was the survivorship of uh, a total hip replacement uh, is just now becoming uh, uh, what it's, we expected it to be. Uh, that's why uh, we try to treat uh, our patients when we find these subtle deformities as strong as we can and uh, with that in mind uh, we developed such complex surgeries as we discussed yesterday. Our purpose is to improve the anatomic subtleties and uh, improve the mechanics of the hip joint. Uh, at our uh, institution uh, since 1980s we, we first had started uh, with uh, femoral osteotomies, but later on, uh, as the results of Salter oste osteotomy became clear, we started using them in uh, more uh, older patients. And uh, with, um, um, in the 1992s, we started using the Bernese osteotomy uh, very aggressively in uh, patients that uh, the surgical indication is questionable. Uh, in our minds today. Uh, but again, as you see in this case, uh, we, we got uh, pretty good results, even if it did not match the ideal criteria. The, um, uh, again, uh, for instance, now these patients probably would not be considered or uh, they would have a much more aggressive surgical procedures. And uh, now we know that if properly done in selected patients, uh, the um, Bernese osteotomy can provide excellent results in 20 uh, years. Meanwhile, uh, we've now uh, developed even more aggressive surgical procedures, and um, uh, we are trying to tackle uh, much more complex deformities with uh, the excellent results we've been seeing with them. However, meanwhile, uh, there's been a huge uh, change in the other side of uh, the business, uh, total hip arthroplasty. We now uh, get much longer survivorship and even better function with uh, the new techniques and technologies that's been uh, developed. So our dilemma is when, when should we uh, be on the more preservative side uh, or uh, burn bridges and uh, put in a hip replacement. Uh, the um, uh, 20 year survivorship is only uh, achievable if we select our patients well. And when you look at the results of uh, the, the osteotomy, uh, if the patient had uh, didn't have any evidence of arthritis, it works quite well, and the age limits uh, is quite defined. Uh, even in open uh, surgery, now we know that 
the younger we attack the, the problem, uh, the better results we, we get. And uh, we see matching evidence uh, rapidly growing in the uh, arthroscopy uh, field that if, uh, if we uh, use it in earlier age and uh, the patient has um, uh, less uh, arthritis, it works uh, much better. So when you put the selection criteria age and the condition of the joint and patient expectations together, uh, probably we have to uh, keep in mind that arthritis and uh, the condition of the labrum is one of the most important uh, selection criteria we have in our hand. And the condition of cartilage should be uh, satisfactory before we suggest these conservative, uh, these uh, uh, sophisticated arthroscopic procedures to our patients. We now know that uh, there are some factors that leads to uh, failure in uh, hip arthroscopy. And if there's a combination of these factors, the number of uh, factors that are present increases, uh, decreases our uh, chances of uh, success. Uh, congruity is a must, but in most cases we don't have it to begin with. And uh, so it, it must be deal dealt appropriately. And uh, if there's um, a lesion to the labrum, again, uh, we should watch uh, uh, the um, uh, expectations uh, much more closely. And one most important factor that came up yesterday is that uh, whatever procedure you do, you have to execute it uh, properly. And uh, this, this needs uh, requires a, a significant learning curve. For instance, this patient had arthroscopy in the left hip uh, and um, again, the patient probably was not a very good select, uh, was not a very good candidate to begin with, and the surgical procedure was performed very poorly. And within six months, the joint ra uh, deteriorated rapidly. And you can see that when you, we resected the femoral head, what they did was saying uh, they doing arth uh, hip arthroscopy. They just basically put a burr in the joint, took only. Uh, less than half a centimeter off the, the cam lesion and uh, said that they completed the procedure. And this uh, later on uh, rapidly caused the hip joint to deteriorate, whereas when, if the patient hadn't had this procedure, probably uh, she could have lasted another uh, uh, several years uh, before this uh, more... Uh, aggressive pr procedure and burning down bridges. One thing we must keep in mind, uh, these procedures are very uh, successful when used properly, but the complications are, uh, if something goes wrong, is quite major. These are a uh, several patients from our uh, series. This is a patient that uh, we did a GANS osteotomy. Uh, when we woke the patient up, he had a drop foot. We thought we had injured the sciatic nerve with one of our screws, and um, it, uh, when we explored the sciatic nerve, removed the screws, uh, realized that um, because the patient was woken up during surgery by the anesthesiologist, the femoral artery was damaged, so we had to make a third incision to reconstruct the femoral artery, and uh, of course, uh, this patient became infected, and uh, the osteotomy failed completely, uh, whereas we had a very good uh, correction to begin with. Uh, again, this patient was, uh, had a hip arthroscopy, a little, a little ra uh, rather aggressive uh, resection of the cam, and for uh, doing a follow-up x-ray, she fell off the x-ray table and fractured her femoral neck and had to undergo a total hip replacement uh, in the first six weeks after the hip arthroscopy. And this patient was a young lady, which we did this uh, uh, rather well, uh, uh, Bernese osteotomy, but uh, she died from a pulmonary embolism uh, in uh, her fourth week because she was uh, apparently a fa factor five 
laden uh, patient, uh, and she had this massive pulmonary embolism and couldn't even make it to the hospital. So uh, who, again, is the question. Uh, probably uh, we all know uh, these criteria uh, meets the expectation, but uh, this, I took this picture right after getting off the airplane in uh, Zurich. Uh, the, the age is becoming a more uh, complicated issue. Uh, for instance, this was a 20-year-old ma uh, male I suggested to do a femoral osteotomy with uh, relative neck lengthening and a Gans osteotomy. And uh, since he was a little hesitant, uh, we did this uh, gadolinium enhanced uh, scan. And when he saw the report uh, stating that the labrum was degenerated and the cartilage had some uh, loss, uh, he did not want to undergo uh, three surgical, pr two surgical pr procedures, and he said that he would wait for his age to, to have a total hip replacement. So um, when I think uh, the age is probably one of the most indications, important indications for decision, and uh, preservation procedures should be kept uh, in the first for the first four, five decades. <coughs> Uh, and later on, uh, we should think about more uh, prosthesis, and we should try to use, be very aggressive in the first uh, three decades and keep arthroscopy procedures for this era. And when you ask me if there's uh, slight osteoarthritis, I would uh, suggest a total hip replacement after age 40 instead of uh, an osteotomy, and that's where I would stop. And if an arthroplasty, I would try to use the more uh, modern technologies. Uh, without symptoms, the patients don't come for our help, uh, don't, don't seek help, and when they come for help, maybe it uh, be, uh, mostly it may be too late. Thank you for your attention.